get out of here as well. Been a big bag of lately, busy. Got another batch here in the day so far. There's someone asked how effective it is for. It's hard to tell at the moment, it hasn't really been on for long enough. Depends on the batch here, I suppose. Some will come good, others may not. If you look inside the cells and look at how physically how intact the plates are, you may get a better chance of loving the batch a bit. This and this is probably the most buggered one out of the lot because the plates are all like they're falling apart. So there's no way that's ever going to crank anything over again. But as a bench top battery or something like that, or an alum, lead alum battery would be good. You won't get the cranking ants, but you get a good little uh, moderately high current power supply with, uh, with it. I think that one's about the same cell wise, and that one's about the same cell wise, but yeah, let's see how much life we can squeeze out of them. That one there still cranks, not for long though, so it's probably a little louder than that. Just a guess, be a little, probably about 50 cold cracking amps left in that I reckon. This will probably be the same. This will probably have 200 cold cracking amps left in it, just a guess. That one was a 600. Then there's a 720. Instead of our main tractor, which uh, we upgraded to a bigger, bigger cracking capacity. This is just getting a bit sulfated. Wasn't cracking the tractor if it was fast enough in the cold. So. We have upgraded to uh, put a Commodore out on it and wired it all up and it uh, came out quite well. Cranks like a beauty now. The original outlet, there was nothing wrong with it, but it was just too small. So I put a um, matters bracket and did some uh, little modifications to the wiring and wired in a, um, a, a Commodore out on it. Out for this car here, which is actually a brand new out and Not an 85 amp out and in place of a 30 amp out and It's much better now. The wiring, the charge wire, B plus wiring, just happened to be the same size too, so it takes the uh, charging car without getting too warm at all. A lot of lights on it seems to keep up, so yeah, it's a lot better than the other outlet that was on it. it wasn't really charging anything when all the lights are on. Anyway, did try the 24 volt option on, the, on that on that zapper. 24 volts had dropped, it raised the um, uh, zapping voltage a little bit by about 10 volts. This is just a shitty wall wart compared to the other one. This little Chinese no name wall wart. <laughs> it's under half, eh, probably half its rated load. 250 milliamps. And it's quite warm, but it hasn't burnt out yet. And that's keeping the diesel photo on. Which is keeping the, that's keeping the batteries above 12 volts. So the diesel photo won't shut down on me. This and it wouldn't uh, stay on for as long as that one it has. It only lasted about 10 hours and the thermal fuse blew. That was a 24 volt 550 milliamp. There's a circuit, the filter capacitor and the uh, rectifier circuit there. Not regulated of course, only a basic bloody wall wart. To design this chat so much so you can't actually get it apart without bugging it up completely. I want to see if I can bypass that thermal fuse in there. They put it in such an inconvenient spot when it comes to repairing them, in other words, it's not worthwhile. So I might have, um, end up popping that. Hmm. That's why an MOT across it. You know, it'll jump the gap inside that fuse and give me a temporary output. 2kV what? 2kV in, 10 times the rated voltage in, 10 times the rated voltage out, I get 24 volt out. Let's try that. Alright, all set up. Um, let's get a little protection cord here, we'll plug it in and see what happens, eh? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Inductive ballast there, the old trot on cat cave. Hmm, that fuse is open, it doesn't pass the TKV thought either. It's designed to be open properly. Alright, I'll unplug safety first. Let's, uh, if I can get this to stay, you know, to get somewhat of an output. You won't get 10 times the voltage going in, 10 times the voltage out, because an iron coil transformer like iron cores, um, inductive, they need frequency governs how they, um, they are, the output, the um, voltage output. Let's see what it does anyway. Probably won't get much higher if it did uh, actually arc over and conduct and energize the primary. It doesn't enjoy as a primary. The end rush to it anyway. 
Hang on, I've got done DC, duh. What AC? That's better. 17.15 volts. Heh, yeah, it can revive a wall up with a blown um, thermal fuse. Heh. <laughs> 17.17 volts out of 24 volts AC out. That was actually. So it's 17 to get 24 out. Charge it up at 2200 microfarad, 35 volt cap. Hey, it's just. There you go, I must have just. No, it died. Yep, it died. There we are. It wasn't connected properly. Let's see if I can try and short that. See what happens. Yeah, no current. Now it's gone higher. 37.6 volts. Highly, the have a uh, thick insulated pliers are a must. Yeah, there you go, 40 volts out. <laughs> no smoke, it seems to work quite well like that. There's just no ants behind it. There's still a redneck laser ant measurement here. Yeah, that's a laser ant measurement, I call it, because it's not actually putting it in series of the circuit to actually measure something being um, drawn, so I call it the lazy way to measure amps. Yep, there's obviously a frequency coming through, through there. There we are, 37 volts out of a blown wall wart. Let's unplug the safety first. Oh, that's nice and unplugged. Didn't even hear any hum. Yeah, no current. Wasn't drawing current whatsoever. No, no warmth. Yeah, just gave me the volts, but no current. Interesting little experiment, eh? Hmm, what could I pop? I'm only meant to pop something, but uh, let's see what I can pop. I'm saving those light bulbs here. I'm still saving them for the PFC cap, they say. I'm holding off uh, doing nothing else with it. What could I like that? Uh... I don't know, to be honest. Yeah. Anyway something different. When you pop a fly back and you want to um, get the, the ferrite core off it or the anode cap off it, salvage this bit because these capacitors inside here will still work good. Had some off-camera experiments and did some arcing and it's got some snapping action and all carboned up so bad I had to get the wire wheel on the grinder. Yeah, made a mess of it. All arced and tracked here between the, um, what's left of the windings and snapped and crackled and popped a lot on the ZVS so Makes a great snappy capacitor. I could have even stuck this under oil. I might yet. There's in, input and output there. When you stick it under oil to stop arc overs. I can get some output on this. Probably put power or something. I think I put the work on this one, but not the red one. So I can just keep that for the sake of a nice little capacitor that's in there. He was having a look up at this thing all over the place. This says a coil. 240 volt solenoid coil out of a dishwasher. Fits this ferrite coil beautifully. I've got some nice little output on this. Only about, I think it was about 6 mil long arc. That's it. That a bloody arced over. And that's um, potted in plastic too. That arced over. Not happy. Not happy. So perfectly designed for this purpose, and it had arced over. I didn't get a video of it though, this is an off-camera experiment. Anyway, it's my little update for now. Thanks for watching.